Well, good evening. It's the 30th of December here, so it's almost uh, New Year's Eve. And uh, uh, I was just playing around with my 5342A uh, micro frequency counter, and I thought I'd do uh, a, a quick video on uh, what I saw. So uh, this is counter is actually pretty cool. I've had a, a, a done a previous uh, a video on it. Uh, but this one here uh, is uh, basically 10 hertz to 18 gigahertz uh, counter, and it uses a unique uh, method called uh, heterodyne harmonic uh, counting. And what that basically is, is it takes the heterodyne part is where it will take a local oscillator and mix it with the incoming frequency. And then from there, it'll be able to send that uh, resultant IF off to a counter to be counted. And the harmonic model is where it takes a voltage control oscillator, you know, uh, a signal and then zero beats it with the incoming signal to work out which harmonic of the look of the VCO is actually matching the incoming signal. And between those two uh, paths, it can actually work out uh, what the uh, uh, resultant um, uh, frequency is. Actually, it's, it's interesting if you look at, um, if you go to the Keysight uh, website and get the manual and look at the block diagram, uh, this actually, everything that comes out of this is actually done on a counter. And uh, this particular one has the uh, amplitude uh, capability on it, which is, I think, option 001. And basically what that means is that it can check the incoming signal and also give me what uh, the amplitude as well as the, uh, uh, the frequency is. And it does that by taking the amplitude, creating a uh, frequency based off the voltage of the amplitude, and then that sends that frequency off to the counter. And so the counter can then provide uh, the microprocessor with the information about what the amplitude is, which I thought was an a interesting way of doing it. So everything is counter-based in this unit. So anyway, uh, I turned this unit on, and uh, when I turned it on, I got this. I was like, ah, oh, damn. You know, the unit is, uh, uh, is broken. You know, I'd had it out of the rack, and I had it sitting in uh, my workshop for a while. Uh, and I was like, oh, dear. Did it get like a bit of moisture from the temperatures or, or what? And so I, I whipped it out and I put it on here and I started to look at the power supply because that's the, you know, the first thing I was thinking was maybe the, um, maybe the uh, uh, microprocessor isn't fully booting because one of the rails is, uh, is done. Because um, it's still Christmas holidays, drink of choice is a nice uh, Scotch whiskey, a little bit of ice for some uh, water. That could be uh, a bit of a crime for some people though. I personally like it because it opens up the uh, the flavour, but each man to his own. So anyway, I thought, oh, bugger. So I grabbed my uh, um, extender card so that I could put the interior cards up on a extender and start checking them. And while I was doing that, I happened to notice that on the back of the unit, and let's just turn this off. We'll see if I can turn it around and get it back in in shot. What you'll see in here, let me get rid of that, is you'll see these two switches. And because I had this unit in my rack, I was actually feeding it an external frequency standard. And so when I had this set to external, you know, it's not using the internal uh, 10 meg uh, uh, crystal oscillator. Flipping it back, I think you can see where I'm going with this. And if we come in here and we turn it back on, you'll notice that now the uh, counter's working. So if you have a 5342A and you haven't played with it for a while and you turn it on and you have that failure to uh, really initialize, check, make sure that you have your uh, 10 meg uh, frequency counter uh, set correctly. And you can see that the unit uh, works because I have it connected to my 8673B here. And you can see it has uh, five meg. If I hit the uh, amplitude button, oh, is it the amplitude? Yeah. Yeah. If you hit the amplitude button, you can see that it's still five gigahertz, and it's showing that it's minus twenty uh, dBm, which is what I have uh, set um, on this uh, on that meter. And you know, if I step that step that up. 
you can see that it should be minus 10 and if I take it to zero dBm it's about half a dBm off which this cable at 5 gig I'll take that so overall nothing was wrong with this and I can go back to what I wanted to do which was to do a little bit of GPIB programming with it uh, but I thought it was interesting because I started working on you know checking the power supply and and so on when I didn't really need to because I forgot that the uh, internal external switch had been set on. Most of the uh, newer stuff uh, has that already worked out. Anyway, that was just uh, a, a little trick that I, you know, trap that I fell into, and hopefully uh, uh, it'll help uh, provide some insight to you know other people that may have gear of the similar era. Anyway, if you liked it, give it a thumbs up, and I'll catch you later.